His Master, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, I want us to take a reading from here. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, from verse 9. Or do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And that is what some of you were. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Now, uh, I want to talk to you about uh, this issue of struggle with uh, negative habits, struggle with evil habits, how to overcome your struggle with uh, evil habits. And something you can take from this uh, scripture is one thing. Uh, whoever you are and you're hearing me, you're not the first person to struggle with evil habits. In fact, the Bible said that there were people who have struggled with evil habits. And uh, far back and from the days of uh, uh, Noah to the days of Abraham, man's tendency is to turn to evil habits. Our attitude, generally speaking, is to turn to evil habits. But the two things is that uh, you don't deceive yourself that God is okay with it. There are some people who argue that uh, like God doesn't hate sinners, that God loves every sinner. Uh, God does not uh, endorse sin. God does not ask you to go on sinning, that he doesn't feel bad about it. Uh, for the sake of sin, God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to come to this world and die. And it's such a serious matter that Jesus had to be stripped naked and beaten open, open so he can redeem us, can pay for our sin. And that is not a light matter. Uh, Hebrews 10, verse 26, it said, if we deliberately keep on sinning, that there's no other sacrifice left, but uh, uh, rather than for us to face the fearful judgment in hellfire. So God does not endorse sin. God does not say it is okay. And some people who are teaching that Christians should be tolerant, it's not about Christians being tolerant. The position of God is very clear about sin. So uh, Christians does, uh, Christian don't need to be tolerant, or whether they are tolerant or not, or not does not change anything. God condemns condemn sin. Now, the third thing I want to take from this uh, scripture is that uh, the, there are people who have dabbled into this kind of lifestyle. There are people who, who have lived in this kind of sin before, like I said. But they were able to come out of these evil habits. The, the scripture we read made them very, very clear. It did not hide them. I, I used the new international version of the Bible. Now, it says from that verse 9 again, or do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither is sexually immoral. Because sexual immorality. He said, idolaters, those who worship idols, no adulterers, nor men who have sex with men. That's what is called homosexuality. And that, you know, the opposite of it is uh, lesbianism. Men who have sex with men. The next thing he mentioned here, he said, thieves, any kind of thief. So you don't you don't thief to support God's work, not to the to the church. That he said a thief, he said, not the greedy. Uh, somewhere Bible called greed, idolatry. So he said the greedy will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now he says drunkards. Now uh, some of us argue that if you take a little wine for your stomach's sake, but uh, in that place in First Timothy chapter five verse twenty two, he said that wine is for medication purposes. And then there were no medicines. Today there are medicines. So if you get drunk and get drunk, he mentioned drunkards, and he mentioned uh, slanderers, he mentioned swindlers, uh, fraudsters, will inherit the kingdom of God. Now he said that if you live this kind of life, he said, do not be deceived. You will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now the good news I'm pointing out here in verse 11, he said, and that is what some of you were. So the people that opposed to Paul were writing this letter to in Corinth, they were having this problem, and they came out of it. That's what I wanted to embrace. They came out of it. You know, most times there is this feeling that everybody is involved in it. That, that, that some people even teach that some quote some with later scripture 
that nobody can live uh, without sin, that uh, uh, we all are sinners, and so nothing can be done about it. God is merciful, he's so kind. Now, the Bible here is very clear about it, that if you live this kind of life, you're not inherit the kingdom of God. And he said some people were living this kind of life, and they were able to come out of it. It would be unfair on God's side if he, is a, he, he points out these things in the scriptures and he, God, knows that there's no way he can come out of it. No, 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 no. You cannot, you cannot say that in fairness. Now, the Bible said those people, they came out of it. And it's, look at what Apostle Paul said there. But he said, in verse, that verse 11 of 1 Corinthians 6, verse 11, he said, and that is what some of you were. That so at the time we're writing this thing to them, they were no longer living that kind of life. They came out of it. They came out of it. And he said, but you were washed. One, they were washed. Two, you were sanctified. They were made holy. They were made holy. They were set apart. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That you were made to have a right standing with God. Justified. You were brought. Now, they, they look at this thing. There was a process that took place. You know, it's not, this is not a flash pan of a thing. But if you're listening to me and you're a believer, you are, I, I know you understand what I'm talking about. Because some people just tell you that maybe you come into the Lord Jesus Christ, that you are free, and the old things have passed away. The old things have passed away. The Bible said in Colossians 1 13, he said, Giving thanks to the Father who has translated us from the dominion of darkness into the kingdom of light in his dear son Jesus Christ. Now, listen, the, your position was changed. The, the battle you were fighting with homosexuality, lesbianism, gay practice, and uh, drunkenness, and gambling, all those things, you were fighting a loser fight. You were fighting a battle you can never win. You cannot win Satan's fight while you're living in Satan's house. When you came to Christ, you were translated, you were moved from that loser position to a winner position. So in Christ Jesus, there are things that are available beside you get born again. And you know you put it in the book of life. There are things that are put in place so that the battle you are fighting with sin and those factors now are the battles of a, of a winner. You are a winner. Christ has conquered. He said you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Washed, sanctified, justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Now, what I want you to hold very firmly here is that you have the capacity to come out of this. Now, th th that's what you need to hold very firmly. Until you tell yourself, I can come out of this. Until it sinks down into you that I can come out of this. You will not muster the right courage and confidence to fight your way out. You know, that's something I, I grew up as a little boy in a, what people call today ghetto neighborhood. You know, free for all fight. And I had this, uh, this, this Ghanaian uh, breed. Though he had a Nigerian uh, father. And the, his name was Kofi. He was messing me up. He was beating me up every now and then. I was tall and lanky, but he was much older. So every now and then he would pick on me, he would beat me up. He was a bully. He was a bully. He had no, this boy, I don't have home. And every fight I was fighting with Kofi was a loser fight. Every time he would just pick me up. But one day I made up my mind to fight Kofi for as a winner. And I told him Kofi they were going to fight. And I, because I knew that unless I confront Kofi and put up a fight, I would never have my peace. So I made up my mind to fight. So on that particular day, I said, come on, let's fight. And he, you know, we do all this Kung Fu thing, stuff in those days. So I said Kung Fu, he said Kung Fu also. And uh, we advanced towards each other. And with the confidence he had, he flew towards me. I had the wisdom to bend, bend down. And he went over me and crash landed like a piece of junk, uh, junk, uh, junk car. And when he got it, it breeze all over him. That was the last time Kofi came to fight me. And I'm also saying that to you, unless you develop your mind and put up a fight to all this enemy of your soul, this thing is strangled, holding you and messing up your life. You, you have to tell yourself, I'm going to put up a fight to come out of this thing. I'm going to do anything within my power to come out of this. You know what I'm, really saying, what I'm saying? Because some people who don't understand what is involved can be talking their rubbish. 
Anytime you get involved in masturbation, you know what happened in you. Anytime you masturbate, you know the, the death that happens in your spirit person. Anytime you get involved in lesbianism, you know what happens to you. You know the, the thing that happens in your inner man. Anytime you get involved in gay practice, you know what happens to you. Anytime you go all those abominable, you know what happens to you. So it's not something you allow people's theology. Some people go in, go in a rubbish of a theology to, to condone, to encourage you. There are a lot of people who have gone into transgender oppression. After they have done that, after a time, they begin to mourn and regret everything they have done. But, but, but somebody is still fighting to defend their right, that they have a right to, to life. But then they, they are suffering for it. They talk about addiction. Bob Marley died, uh, died at the age of 36. He renounced the Rastafarian movement. He was baptized into the Lord Jesus Christ. The last thing he said was that money cannot give life. But these workers of wickedness, still we are pushing his music. That's what the, the media house is doing. They keep advertising him as, as a Rastafarian and all that kind of rubbish. But Bomali repented because he knew what was going on in his life. He knew the pain he was going through. So you listening to me know the crisis going on in your life. And that is why I'm telling you that if you're going to come out of this thing, you're going to put up a fight. You're going to look at this thing and say from today, I'm going to fight you like I'm going to win. Yes. You go to say that I will fight you like I'm going to win. I will never again fight you like you are hopeless and miserable and there's nothing I can do to come out of you. I won't fight you that way anymore. And that is where we are going to now. Yeah, I'm talking specifically to you if you are into lesbianism, into uh, homosexuality, if you're into masturbation, if you're into negative gambling, drunkenness, and drug addiction, all these kind of things that pollute you and uh, they are wasting your, your income, they are wasting your career, they are wasting your health. They enjoy, you enjoy, maybe you're into all court, you're hearing me today. And this thing has you in a stranglehold and you keep doing them and every day you, you have, when you finish, you begin to lament. How did I ever get into this kind of thing? Those of us, some of you who get involved in a, a bestiality, we have sex with animals and all those kind of things. Or you, 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 you watch pornography. You know yourself that you're going through torture. So you don't need Facebook or YouTube or what they call all those names you they have uh, or Google to tell you whether you should be doing it or not. And you are the person I'm talking to. I told you. And now, first connection to six verse 11, that the church in Corinth has such people. And the writer of that letter said, those people were in it and they came out of it. And so, one thing you need to do is to fight the fight like you want to come out of it. And so, what are the processes to fight? Now, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22, 2 Timothy 2.22, he said, flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, love, and peace along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Now, he said, flee the evil desires of youth. King James Bible said, flee youthful lust. Now, if you look at this matter, it's very clear that it's asking you to relocate. A, a one of you sent me a message and said that I am sleeping with my, my landlord's wife. She's older than I am, and uh, she's sleeping with me. She's sexually immoral, and I'm a believer. She's not a believer. I feel tortured. Brother, pack out of that place. Pack out of that house. She, uh, let, let, let me ask you a question. If you heard that somebody was going to come and assassinate you tonight, and you know they're going to assassinate you, would you be believing there? You will run until you see the point that your life is in danger. And you can't allow this thing going on in your life. He said, flee. Get away from the environment that allows you to continue in this lifestyle. Get away from the environment. Get away from the things. Check your phone. Down, de delete all those things. Go for reformatting. Send out everything that brings in pornography, lesbianism, gay, and those things that lead into drugs. Get all them out of your life. Get away from them. Get away from people that are like to, to put you to this kind of thing. Quit the job. Look, brother, you need to understand if this is very important to you, if this is very pressing to you, you, you ask yourself, of what use is this job? Because some of you who are involved in this homosexual and lesbian practices, that, that's where you're working. That's where you're getting your salary. 
But you know that that is really wasting you. You cannot make anything out of the money. You get away from it. You that is into masturbation, you get away from those things. Check around you. Check around you. And see whether there are things around you that, that permit you to do this thing. Because most of them have to go and stay in a private place. He said, flee. And the number two thing he said there, in that second Timothy chapter 2, verse 22, he said, flee the evil desires of youth. And the number two thing he mentioned, pursue righteousness, pursue faith, love and peace along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. He said, pursue. You have to move now. You know, I used to tell people, it is this two legs of yours takes to a place where you get drunk. This two legs of you, you have taken to. So now you turn into that way around. Let this your hands and this your leg take you to the place where you pursue righteousness. Take you to the place where you pursue faith. Take you to the place where you pursue love. Take you to the place where you pursue peace. And he said, You don't do it alone. You don't. He said, Along with other people who are calling on the name of the Lord out of a pure heart. That means there are people who are calling on God's name, but not out of a pure heart. There are people, and you know them. There are some churches that trollate that these things you're doing. There's a place you walk, and they trollate what you're doing. There are friends you have, and they trollate what you're doing. Even though they carry Bible, even though they, they sing, even though they go to church and do those things. He said, you get away from them, and you change your association. You look for people who are pursuing God out of, out of a pure heart. That means you have to deliberately look for the right kind of church. And that's what brings us to what we are talking about here. Apostle Paul said, you we are washed. I, 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 if you read my book, uh, you can go to uh, some of my books, uh, 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 Baptism as the key to start deliverance. Uh, some people who we are delivered from negative habits and demons because they were properly baptized by immersion. There's a real book I've written, How to Be Delivered and Remain Delivered. You can ask for those books. You can ask for that one, Convenant, because one falls and double into all co that I put us not looking at something. You know? And that book I wrote, uh, You Can't Ignore Satan and His Demons. All those kind of, you can ask for those, but they can be of help to you. But what I'm going to say in that sense is that you, you are coming out of this bondage and this oppression has to be deliberate, it has to be intentional. You come out of them. You go to the right church and you go to the right, right assembly. And you, you, there's nothing even wrong telling the church and the pastor. Yes, somebody reached me on Facebook. He was telling me how he was involved in a, a gay practice and all that. I said, go and tell your pastor. He stopped chatting with me. What kind of foolishness is that? You were talking to me on Facebook. I can't help you more than I'm doing now. You need to tell your pastor that I have this problem. Bible said in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 17, say he is keeping watch over you. He will give account before God of, of, because of you. I, you met me on Facebook or you don't read some of my books. How can I give account about you? If you are sincere about coming out of negative habits, you will not be ashamed to tell your pastor. You will not be ashamed to seek the right, if you are in the wrong church, you seek the right church. You go to the right place. Bible say along with those who are seeking God out of a pure heart, I told you first and foremost, you have to take a, a, an aggressive a, action by fleeing, coming out of that thing, destroying the things that is, remind, reminds you of them. Go to join another group of people. Go to somewhere where this practice is not possible. Value your life. Value your future. Put up a fight for yourself. Determine to come out of the mess. That is the way you come out of negative habits. Remember I told you that you are not the first to learn in negative habits. There are people who have landed in that, those habits and they took deliberate decisions and they, action, and they came out of it. You have to also take such action and you want to come out of it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, I want to say something. You can reach me after. You can pass through my WhatsApp uh, platform or you can get me through email. Uh, but, but if you want to come to the center in Port Harcourt, you are welcome. But what I want to make is I'm praying for you. Now, why I've said all this thing is that if you change to the right environment, prayer will be easy for you. You will meet people who can pray with you. You meet people who can counsel you. You meet people who can minister to you. You meet people who can stand with you. You can even meet people who have been through mess too. Because they will keep telling you that this thing is too strong. It's a lie. You can come out of it. If it's a deliverance problem, the demon can be cast out. 
You can learn how to pray the right kind of prayer. You can learn how to read the right kind of Christian books. You can learn how to do the right kind of things. And when you occupy your mind with positive things, I guarantee you, you have total freedom from negative influences and negative behavior. Let me tell you, I'm praying for you. Remember, it's your brother, Emma Angel Wonsu, at pnuanagia.org, plus 234-803572-4526. I want to hear from you. Wherever you are, you have had a smith. I want to hear from you, and we are praying for you from here in Port Accord. God bless you. Remember, under this anointing in Jesus' name.